that application has shown that the current mobile IP technology uh, tech network can meet the requirements of the information transmission for the MIPIS system. This is the IS receiver, uh, MIPIS receiver, and uh, this is the MIP center. Mm, the next uh, is the integrated IS. When source ship with IS and the non source ship with MIPIS in the same water area, they can identify each other by using the integrated IS, so called IIS. The picture is the IIS principle. Uh, in this picture, uh, picture um, there are the IIS shape and the MIPIS shape. The IIS, uh, IIS center authenticates the range of identification. It collects the information from IIS station and MIPIS. It also changed the identification information to IS shape and uh, MIP shapes. And the pictures um, are the shape border terminals of IIS system, system test in Yantai Harbor at North China Sea. The picture A is MIP IS terminal. It also can display the IS shape with the capital A. The picture B is uh, IS terminal, which also can display the MIP uh, IS uh, shape with the triangle symbol. <coughs> um, the conclusions, conclusions uh, this um, article proposed a new MIP IS technology based on the public mobile IP technology, uh, network and a new integrated IS technology for the mutual identification of source ship and with IS and non source ship with MIP IS. So this technology, I think, can provide the solutions of collaboration and cooperation between source ship and non source ship to improve the safety in the same water area with different navigation safety. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Zhang. The following speaker is Arne Dimmen, Director of the Maritime Safety of the Norwegian Coastal Administration. He is a member of the IANA Council and Chairman of the Pilotage Authority Forum. Arne, please. Thank you. And Ladies and gentlemen, today I'm here for, uh, for presenting someone else's work. And uh, this paper has been uh, uh, made by Mr. Ernur Retzat, he's the chief scientist at the uh, Marine Tech, which is a uh, Norwegian uh, Marine uh, Science Institute. And from my colleague, Mr. Bjarne Kleppe, a senior advisor in my division for, uh, for maritime safety. Let's dive into some of uh, the messages here. The new e-navigation service may require about 100 kilobits per second of digital bandwidth. Not too much in our digital world, but uh, as you will see, it is pretty much in, in some maritime uh, uh, uses. Today's satellite cannot provide a sufficient quality of service in all areas and cases, and we will show that. And I think the main thing is that we should consider new digital ship to show communication services. As you know, in the future we will see more coordination uh, ENAV is, uh, is the main uh, uh, part of, of this. Uh, in the, uh, we have seen in the oil and gas industry in Norway the, the uh, move, the shift to what is called integrated operations, where they do very complex operations from several uh, places at one time. Uh, some sitting on land, some sitting uh, in the platforms or even in, uh, in some vessels outside. And. Uh, it was very interesting to hear a comment from uh, Warnemünde University about, about uh, what kind of data you could get out of, uh, of the ship um, in, uh, uh, through the AIS because I believe that uh, in the future some with the integrated operation when it comes to ship is, is also uh, something we need to, to consider. Uh, the, uh, the most obvious case is of course the, uh, the pilot tug lock mooring uh, operations 
even our, our most uh, experienced pilots have problems when it's more than five tugs that needs to be, be coordinated uh, at once. So there are things like that. And also I would uh, stress the, uh, the portable pilot units, which actually it, it might be looked upon as one of the most fielded ENAV systems today. In many ways it is. And uh, one of the other uses that, that we see uh, for sending more information to the ship before the pilot embarks is actually to send sailing plans out to the ship before, before it embarks to, to ease the, uh, the master pilot information exchange. This is uh, it's done many places today, mainly by fax. Uh, it could be done in a lot smoother way. Uh, the paper refers to a study uh, which was published in the European Journal of Navigation last year, uh, where the, uh, there was a, a thorough walk through all the possible ENAV uh, concepts and, and uh, services, and uh, the type of, of services, how much information they needed, and what the present um, communication systems uh, could deliver. And uh, the main conclusion is that in coastal areas, between 30 and 140 kilowatt per second is sufficient for most of the operations, while in port and port approach we need uh, somewhat more than that. So the question is why cannot the satellite provide the necessary bandwidth or should we say service in this case? And uh, there are many reasons uh, which we'll come, come back to. Of course, it, uh, it will remain the backbone of, uh, of this, but there are many other things that, uh, that we need to, to look at. One, general uh, problem with satellite systems is of course latency when you talk about integrated operations at least. Even a latency of one to two seconds might be too much there. So if you look at the traditional geostationary, the only thing I would like to point out here, this is, is well known, but the shadow effect is, is still pretty uh, tough. Uh, in our area it's very tough since uh, above 76, 78 degrees uh, north there's practically no coverage. And also in many of the fjords and other obstacles, uh, we have problems with the uh, geostationary satellites coverage. Uh, one very specific uh, experience with this was last year we had a freighter, a petrol sandwich in Vodsk, uh, which rammed a bird mountain in, in the remote Arctic island of Bear Island. And uh, we had two major problems in the search and rescue operations and also in the, uh, in the following counter pollution operation uh, due to communication problems. So this is a very viable uh, uh, thing to think about. Of course, the, the LEO systems, they have some more advantages uh, uh, in, in some cases. There are, however, a latency even there because of a very complex uh, signal structure and uh, the way the signal is, is uh, routed. And uh, there are also some questions about the commercial viability uh, of this. I want to dig into, into this now. So what about AIS? As we have heard this morning, AIS is an extremely good technology for small set data broadcast. And uh, as, uh, as uh, Rolf and Marcus pointed out earlier this morning, there are a lot of things that can be done and uh, should be done uh, on this. If we, we can also look at, at other land-based digital radio, and I think we need to do that. Um, the uh, alternatives that is most obvious is, of course, what is available to all of us, like uh, cell phones, the new generations there, Wi-Fi, etc. And we, we look into a little bit of, of uh, all of us here. Cell phone system, of course, works pretty good in uh, ports and in a uh, well-habitated area where you can uh, have a reasonable uh, trust in, in, uh, in their performance. But it's definitely not something you can trust uh, traveling along the coast or in other areas. And the Wi-Fi is also deployed in, in some ports. Um, I, I think it's not really a viable alternative for, um, for coastal services since it, it both operates in, in a non-licensed band and it's, uh, you cannot guarantee any service uh, uh, with it. If you look at, uh, the, there is a, a separate option, the digital VHF system, which uh, facilitates using of uh, existing VHF infrastructure to, to a very high degree. Uh, it's shown that this can give up to a 70 kilometers range, and the bandwidth is, 